A 3D animation showing planet Earth spinning in space. The focus shifts and zooms in on Europe, then it tapers down to a satellite view of the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight is a diamond-shaped island nestled in the Solent, just off the southern coast of England. This little jewel is home to a cornucopia of natural world surprises and wonders. Footage of houses nestled within miles of lush green countryside, then a red squirrel perched on a branch, chewing something clutched between its claws. A thick forest stretches out towards the horizon, flanked by acres of agricultural land. Great parts of the island contend areas of outstanding natural beauty, where the red squirrel is native and abundant, and flora and fauna are plentiful. In fact, the whole region is so rich in diversity, that it's been designated a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. A steam train snakes its way through green fields. Waves lap a beach overlooked by towering cliffs. Tourism and farming play a major part of the island's economy, and you can see why as you traverse through the rich bucolic countryside. Its patchwork of multicoloured, diversely cropped fields blends seamlessly with the stark white chalky cliffs and soft golden beaches. A red and white striped lighthouse stationed on the last of three chalk stacks stretching out to sea beyond a stark white cliff. The ferry slowly sails into a busy harbour. The tide rolls into a wide sandy beach. Much of the island's success lies in its location and geology. Its location because it's a short ferry journey from the British mainland, which is ideal for tourism with its milder and warm temperatures that attract holidaymakers to the island's seaside towns and tourism-related activities. This is a trend that was started in 1845 when Queen Victoria bought a house and estate on the island and frequently visited. Queen Victoria's impressive palazzo-style former residence, Osborne House. It's also known for its incredible geology within such a small area. Two young men speak to the camera, one after the other, positioned on different Isle of Wight beaches. Caption reads, Theo Vickers, White Coast Fossils, and Jack Wanfor, White Coast Fossils. It's a diverse area biologically and geologically. So for example here when we're talking about fossils and rocks, we have a geological record here spanning um, around 130 million years from the early Cretaceous right down through into um, the Pleistocene. And some of our sections, particularly some of our Paleogene rocks, they're some of the best exposures of rocks of this age um, in Europe. The Isle of Wight is one of these places that is just packed with fossil remains and amazing diversity and there's not many places well, in Europe, really, where you can find dinosaur remains to the extent you do down here, and an amazing diversity of fossils in such a small, compact coastline. So in 67 miles of coastline, we have over a 1,000 different species of fossils you can find around the island. The Isle of Wight is world-renowned as one of the best places in Europe to go hunting for dinosaurs. Its rich fossil beds and history mean that the island has played a critical role in the history of paleontology and the study of fossils. A woman with short brown hair stands on a cliff top as she speaks to the camera. Caption reads, Susanna Maidman, museum scientist. One of the really good things about the Isle of Wight is because it's got so many cliffs, um, the cliffs are continuously being eroded by the sea. And this means that the dinosaur fossils uh, erode out over time. And the rate of cliff erosion is really high. So new dinosaur specimens are being discovered all the time. And this has been going on obviously for a very, very long time. And we have some of the best preserved, uh, most complete dinosaur skeletons ever found in the UK from here on the Isle of Wight. Footage of dinosaur bones on display in the museum. In the last 200 years, over 20 different species of dinosaurs have been found here. Some of these have been found nowhere else in the world. The Victorian scientists who first unearthed remains of these giant dinosaurs, plants, mammals and reptiles attempted to make sense of these extraordinary animals. A man wearing a white shirt stands on a cliff top as he speaks to the camera. Caption reads, Paul Barrett, museum scientist. So there are a lot of uh, famous paleontologists that worked on material from the Isle of Wight, but, and there are a few that were very, very active here themselves. One of the early ones was actually a vicar on the Isle of Wight, William Fox, who was responsible for finding many of the early significant discoveries. And these found their ways into the hands of people like Sir Richard Owen and Thomas Henry Huxley in London. So they worked by some of the really great and good of paleontology. A sepia tone photograph of a Victorian man with thinning hair. Fossils laid out in the museum archives follows. It was in 1841, while studying the island's fossils of giant reptiles, that Sir Richard Owen noticed a number of similarities, and he created the word dinosauria, meaning terrible lizards. The large number of early dinosaur discoveries that came from the island had a major influence in shaping early ideas about dinosaur evolution and biology. Because these fossils were found at an early point in dinosaur studies, they became a reference for understanding, almost like a blueprint, for many of the dinosaurs that were found later. Many of the bigger family groups of dinosaurs are named after some of these early discoveries from the Isle of Wight. 
Just because they're old doesn't mean that these discoveries aren't relevant today. In fact, these dinosaurs are some of the most important because they're the holotypes, and that means that they're the ones that kind of hold the name. That means that whenever we find a new dinosaur that we think might be closely related, we have to go back and look at these ones to determine whether we've got a new species or whether it's the same thing. So they're just as relevant today as they were 120 years ago. I think there's still lots of potential for new dinosaurs from the Isle of Wight. A slow spinning 3D animation of a wide, long tailed ankylosaur skeleton. The dinosaur's grey body with pale orange spikes fades onto the bones. At least three new dinosaurs have been named just in the last couple of years. I know of other undescribed specimens already in museums, both on the Isle of Wight and in London, that are likely to get new names too, increasing the roster of animals from here even further. The most common dinosaurs that we find here on the Isle of Wight are iguanodontian dinosaurs. These are two and four legged herbivores, so plant eating dinosaurs. They're quite sort of slender, they probably could move quite fast. They're well known uh, by Iguanodon, which had its, its famous thumb spike, um, but there's actually quite a diversity of these different dinosaurs on the island. So there's a very rich fauna of dinosaurs from the Isle of Wight containing many of the groups that we'd be familiar with. So for example, we have armoured dinosaurs, uh, the tank-like things like Polycanthus. We have a variety of two and four-legged plant-eating dinosaurs called ornithopods, like Iguanodon and its relatives. We have a few examples of the gigantic plant-eating sauropod dinosaurs, the big long-necked animals, relatives of animals like Diplodocus. We also have a lot of meat-eating dinosaurs, ranging from quite small animals all the way through to gigantic predators like Neo Veneta and Neo Tyrannus. With so much here to discover, it would be only natural for you to want to have a go at looking for a discovery of your own. So how can you get involved? So the Isle of Wight's really good simply because it's one of the places in the UK you might actually find a dinosaur. You stand a very high chance, if you're walking along the beach, of just spotting a bit of bone lying in the shingle or maybe sticking out the edge of a cliff. But I would say that if you do see bones coming out the cliff, please don't take them out. The cliffs are very unstable. You might find yourself in quite a dangerous situation. And also, those bones actually belong to whoever owns the land atop the cliff. But there is a really strong chance that you might find dinosaurs here. And there's also an excellent museum on the island that displays a lot of the key finds that you can go and see right here. A modern building with the words Dinosaur Isle, Interactive Dinosaur Museum, over its entrance. Dinosaur Isle is the Isle of Wight Council's geological museum. Although a modern building, the collection was started over 200 years ago. A man speaks to the camera, sitting next to a desk covered with dinosaur fossils. Caption reads, Martin Munt, Dinosaur Isle. So what the collection is, it's a geological collection. It's not just dinosaurs, it's the fossils, it's the rocks, it's the minerals from the Isle of Wight. Now specifically, it is the Isle of Wight. So we are collecting fossils and rock samples from between about 130 and about 30 odd million years ago. Also the local Pleistocene as well. So the museum tells the geological story of the Isle of Wight, uh, but obviously with a great emphasis on the dinosaurs because that's what people seem to like. <laughs> Indeed, many holidaymakers head straight for the dinosaur themed attractions, little realizing they can also have fossil related adventures of their own. The Isle of Wight is a lovely place to visit, even if you have no interest in dinosaurs or fossils. The, the climate's beautiful, the beaches are beautiful, the cliff's beautiful, the environment's lovely. So it's a really, really nice place to visit. It's a nice place to spend a day on the beach. But, you know, if you happen to look over while you're on the beach and pick up a dinosaur vertebra, then even better. So it's a great place to come and visit. It's a great place to come fossil collecting. And the majority of beaches around the island, you don't need tools, you don't need hammers, you don't need chisels. You can just walk along and the fossils are just simply on the beach. You can just pick them up as well. So it's really exciting. If you spend a week here, you're almost guaranteed to leave with some really cool fossils. If you're enjoying this series, then click on our follow on video to keep watching or let us know what you thought in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more content from the Natural History Museum. Footage of the cliffs is overlaid on the left hand side with a narrow purple rectangle on which the credits are displayed. Film, Edward Ellis Taylor, NHM Studios. Research, Emily Osterloff, Josh Davis. Contributors, Paul Barrett, Susanna Maidment, Martin Munt, Theo Vickers, Jack Wanfor. Archive, Shutterstock, Google Earth, Stuart Pond. Music, Audio Network. Credits continue with thanks. The National Trust, Enterprises Limited. The Crown Estate Commissioners, Lobster Locations Limited. Knight Frank, Dinosaur Isle Museum. White Coast Fossils. Text at the bottom of the column reads, Copyright owned by the trustees of the Natural History Museum London. On the right-hand side, the Natural History Museum logo is displayed, consisting of the letters NHM, repeated in a concentric circular formation.